<laughs> Hello there, thanks a lot for coming by PosterCentral.com's video blog today. I'm Pete Howard, and you can rub your eyes, but it's true. The one and only, the legendary Rockabilly Pioneers, the rock and roll trio on a concert poster. Can you believe this? It's kind of funny, if, if you know the group well or whatever. They're billed as Dorsey Burnett and the Rock and Roll Trio on this particular window card. You know, they were generally known as Johnny Burnett and the Rock and Roll Trio, um, which, a matter of fact, would be the name of their self-titled album, which would come out two months after this uh, in December. So even though Johnny was the younger Burnett, he was pretty much, you know, the leader of the group. And in fact, the group was oftentimes called, forget rock and roll, just the Johnny Burnett Trio. And a matter of fact, that was the um, name given on the record label, on Coral Records, of their very next single after this concert. Talk about fun timing, oh my gosh. Two days after this concert, out came the single, Train Kept a Rollin'. Oh my goodness. Well, wow, talk about an important and highly influential song. Well, wow. now, now the Burnettes and the Rock and Roll Trio did not write that, or didn't originate it, but boy, they sure took it to the moon and just planted it in rock and roll history, amazingly so. Matter of fact, Led Zeppelin's Jimmy Page has singled out the Rock and Roll Trio as having this, you know, magnificent guitar sound that just blew him away. And also, Page has um, put on record that when the New Yardbirds got together and rehearsed for the first time in late 1968, Page along with Plant, Bonham, and Jones, of course, the first song they played rehearsing was The Train Kept a Rollin'. And Page said it was mesmerizing. We just were, we just knew we had something special. We just like, after that song, we paused for a few moments or something and just said, oh my gosh, you know. And then Led Zeppelin, uh, all of 1960, well, late 68, excuse me, I'm getting ahead of myself here. <laughs> okay, the New Yardbirds in late 68, of course, overseas, and Zeppelin in very late 68, and for much of 1969, opened their shows with Train Kept a Rollin'. So <laughs> you, might, you probably knew a lot of this, but it just shows how powerfully influential the rock and roll trio was. And then how about the 70s? Well, Aerosmith, at their very first show in 1970, and pretty much throughout the 70s, often closed their shows with Train Kept a Rollin'. Well, wow. so... Okay, so the rock and roll trio, though, talk about commercial success. They never charted anything, but they certainly left quite a footprint. They, uh, they were based in Memphis, Tennessee, and comprised of the Burnett Brothers and their friend Paul Burleson on guitar. And uh, it's kind of funny the way rock and roll was in 56, even though they had not entered the charts anywhere. Um, they had already, by the time of this poster, I believe they were all behind them. They had been on American Bandstand and Steve Allen's Tonight Show and Perry Como's Craft Music Hall. You know, Coral Records was really promoting them. And with Elvis's explosion, the media wanted, you know, anything rock and roll at that point. And then in September, after this show, excuse me, just the month before, they went on Ted Max Amateur Hour at Madison Square Garden. So, wow, that's, that's uh, quite a feather in their cap. Now, interestingly, in this year, in late 56, the group splintered, unfortunately, with Dorsey, you know, the, the older brother split, um, splitting off and going on his own. He was just ticked off by the group name and the billing, even though he got it on this poster, not usually. And uh, he did sing lead on some songs, and so he was just probably tired of his brother getting the majority of the attention. So if you try to boil all of this down to, you know, one poster, one concert, one date, and one small town, you can really kind of overreach and everything as to why it says Dorsey. But, you know, with Dorsey's name on here, one thing is for sure, it was the full original rock and roll trio because he was the one who left and he hadn't left yet. So, in fact, maybe this was even... Um, uh, show with their new drummer, Tony Austin, who they picked up right about this time. So I'll tell you, with such a short lifespan, finding an original concert poster window card by the Rock and Roll Trio, jeez, next to nothing, right? Talk about a hen's tooth, my goodness. Now, you're probably wondering, hey Pete, you know, Carl Perkins is no slouch. I know, there he is, the headliner, but I've done another blog, I don't know if it's up yet or not, with, like, covering four Carl Perkins concert posters made by Hatch from this very period, four in a row. So I'm giving all the love to the, the um, rock and roll trio um, on this particular blog. Up at the top there, as you can see, real quickly, it does say the Armory in Amory, Mississippi, which, by the way, is very close to Tupelo, Mississippi. And uh, Thursday, October 11th, and two-hour rock and roll show. How cool. 
You know what I was thinking? Rock and Roll Trio plus Carl Perkins is a fourth. God, talk about a million quart, million dollar quartet all on itself, right? Just those four guys. Imagine seeing this show. What rockabilly and roots rock and roll history. Oh my gosh. So real quickly, I'm going to close with a little treat here. We can jump ahead since there's no pictures of the guys on here. Let's jump ahead seven years to the San Francisco Bay Area with Johnny and Dorsey Burnett as separate acts. This is the original Tillman window card from the Bay Area, as I said. And they're opening for Gene Pitney, as you can see, but there they are, the younger Johnny, and it lists three of his four top 20 hits. Unfortunately, it's just maddening. His biggest hit, Your 16, is listed here as Sweet 16, which really sucks, but you know, whatever, those mistakes happened. And then Dorsey Burnett, it does mention Tall Oak Tree, which is the song he was most known for um, during his solo career. So nice to see the two guys on there, the two brothers, on a window card from a few years later, the 60s. But, uh, you know, you can find things from the 60s, and you can find Gene Pitney concert posters, but good luck finding another rock and roll trio concert poster. But that's what I love about the hobby. This stuff is so fun to discover. Thanks very much for dropping by. Have a good day. And, uh, boy, it's tough to top this one, but forward we shall move. <laughs> okay, take care. Have a nice one. Bye-bye.